Hello and once again welcome to the Deloitte Regional Crane Survey. Today we are going to take you on a virtual journey across Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham and Belfast and provide an overview of the development activity that's taken place during 2020, while many of us have been stuck at home. Now let's take a closer look at those all important numbers. Here in Manchester and Salford, construction activity and growth had been accelerating up from 2014 until 2019 before levelling out. Construction activity in 2020 has remained broadly consistent with previous years, demonstrating robustness in the local property market through sustained activity during the COVID-19 pandemic. A further 24 schemes commenced development in the area during 2020, which is up by one compared to last year. The total number of schemes under construction at the end of 2020 was 72. The residential market has been incredibly active, delivering 14,000 new homes and apartments in the Crane Survey area since 2014. A third of these were delivered in 2020 alone, which is the highest number since our records began in 2002, and presents an exciting opportunity to further boost the residential population. Despite high levels of delivery, new activity has sustained a pipeline of 12,300 new homes under construction, which is to be delivered between now and the end of 2024. 16 new residential developments comprising almost 4,700 new homes started construction during 2020. However, due to the pandemic and market uncertainty about the timing of a return to work and tourism on various scales, there has been a reluctancy to start new office or hotel development during 2020. The amount of new office space under construction in 2020 dropped by 700,000 square feet to 1.3 million square feet. However, 1.2 million square feet of new office space was delivered in 2020, which is the highest number since 2008. The overall number of hotel beds under construction remained high at circa 2,500, despite only two new hotels commencing construction during 2020. Although COVID-19 has clearly impacted some development markets acutely, momentum is currently still on Manchester and Salford side. As the economy recovers, the region is set to capitalise on growth opportunities from some big projects. Further new starts required to boost the supply of offices and workspace beyond 2021 are likely to be generated by Mayfield, Noma, St John's and New Bailey, whilst new residential neighbourhoods continue to positively shape the edge of the regional centre. There were seven new starts in Belfast during 2020. A fall from 11 new starts in 2019. We recorded 23 developments in the city centre, either under construction or completed during the year. Building upon momentum from previous years, 11 office developments were under construction or completed in 2020, amounting to 1.3 million square feet of space. While a wave of student accommodation has increased the city centre population in recent years, a wider residential market has been slow to develop, with no new starts recorded in 2020. Work has continued on the Ulster University Belfast campus, with completion forecast in September 2021. In the south of the city, Queen's have continued their development programme with the Queen's Student Centre and the Maclay Library Extension. There were two retail developments under construction in Belfast during 2020. These developments relate to the bank building's fire two summers ago and will help restore Castle Place, a key space in the city centre. However, the broader outlook for high street retail is clearly very challenging. The tourism and hotel sector also face uncertainty with respect to the return of events, out-of-state leisure visitors and business travellers. No new hotels came forward in 2020. There continues to be ambitious mixed-use developments in the pipeline, including Waterside, Tribeca and Smithfield. Also, the Transport Hub and Weaver's Cross development will begin construction in 2021. It is notable that even in the face of COVID-19 and EU exit, 
In Belfast, we are still primarily talking about opportunities and challenges that existed before. Fundamentally, the shift from a retail-dominated city centre to a broader mix of uses is underway. Development activity continues across Birmingham city centre as we all look forward with great anticipation to hosting the Commonwealth Games in July next year. The arrival of HS2 and the first brand new intercity terminus station built in Britain for over 100 years means Birmingham is continuing to attract national and international interest. When visitors start to return to the city centre, they should be impressed by the progress on some of the most important and iconic developments. 103 Colmore Row now dominates the skyline in the centre of the city being the highest commercial building. Looking west, you can immediately see the huge progress that's taken place at Paradise, with new occupiers moving in and more development on the way. Across Centenary Square at Arena Central, the refurbishment of the former TSB Bank is progressing well, and it won't be long before the GPU move into the new 240,000 square foot building behind. The improvements to Centenary Square, including the extension to the tram, and refurbishment of Symphony Hall have transformed this part of the city. In all quarters of the city, residential development continues at pace, with investors and developers forging ahead with new schemes from Digbeth across to the Jewellery Quarter and down to Southside. 2020 may go down for many as a year to forget, but despite all the challenges, Midlands developers continued their work to help shape a better city. Construction activity in Leeds has also shown some resilience to the difficulties posed in 2020. There were 12 new starts, compared to 12 in 2019, and the Leeds Crane Survey average of 13. At the end of 2020, there were 28 schemes under construction, one more than in 2019. 12 of the schemes under construction are for residential development, which is the most we've seen since the financial crisis. This year saw four new residential developments commence, in line with the average number of new starts over the past six years. Delivery of built-to-rent accommodation remains high at 69% of the units under construction. This is set to continue with the pipeline activity recorded, particularly in the South Bank area. The office market has also been notably active, with four new starts, two of which are new builds. All are being developed speculatively, without confirmed pre-lets, indicating some confidence in Leeds' growth prospects. In the education and healthcare sectors, delivery of development in the northwest of the city centre is contributing to the growth of the Leeds Innovation District. As with other regional cities, Leeds has experienced a slowdown in new development in the retail, leisure and hotel sectors during 2020. We expect there to be some change in Leeds' core retail and leisure offer in coming years as a result of changing consumer habits. This was evidenced in the recently revealed plans for the new Eastgate Quarter, which include a reduced retail and leisure offer and more homes for future city centre residents. The next few years will deliver exciting new plans for Leeds' cultural and sporting offer, which will have long-term growth benefits for the city. This includes plans to host more Rugby League World Cup games than any other city, hopefully taking place in 2021, and plans for the 2023 Cultural Festival. So what are we to make of 2020? In our view, the regional cities have outperformed expectations. They've remained resilient and maintained the momentum that has been built over recent years. Credit must go to the many stakeholders involved. However, it's important to note the growing maturity of local and regional players with less reliance on those nationally. Innovation and adaptability should leave our cities well placed to respond to market opportunities as they emerge. The pandemic has changed the landscape in many areas, but our cities look well placed to respond to the challenges and opportunities ahead. We look forward to reviewing the results this time next year, and please do check out our full Crane Survey report online.